G'day. The other day when I did a uh, video on, on basic measurement equipment, I talked about dial calipers, uh, but I didn't have one to show you. I had to show you a dial depth gauge. The other day, a friend of mine said, I've got a broken one of these, 150 millimeter dial caliper. Do you want it? And I said, oh yes, okay, I'll, I'll have that. So today's video is, is actually taking this thing apart and showing you how it works and uh, trying to find the, the, the problem with this one. It was dropped and it's a little bit notchy. Um, and, you know, trying to, to get it to back to where it should be. This is the new arrival. Uh, it's a dial caliper. It's a Mitutoyo. And the story I, I was told was that it was sitting on top of a, a machine and something bumped it and it fell off onto the ground and now it's a bit notchy. So you, 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 you know, get to there and then it wants to stop and you can pull it a bit further, go around a bit more and so on. So there's a problem there somewhere. And so I'm going to take this apart and uh, see what I can do to find out what the problem was and maybe even fix it. One of the nice things about Mitutoyos and Starrett's too uh, is that somewhere on the internet there is a parts diagram and this is the parts diagram for this and so you can see there's, a, there's the, the rack, uh, there's a pinion in there which uh, engages with the rack, a little bit of a sub chassis, dial, you know, uh, the, what they call the crystal uh, on, a, on a bezel, in, uh, needle, face and so on. So to get to this I need to to go um, basically through here. So I'll be disassembling it pretty much right down to the to the nuts and bolts. One of the things I found with these in the past is these have got a, a hairspring in them. This one doesn't seem to show one and so I'm wondering whether they've Mitutoyo have come up with another way of, of doing this so that they don't need that hairspring. That's all good because uh, I don't particularly like playing with those things. They're, they're a bit messy. However, that's the, that's the idea there. Some of these parts are actually available as spares but um, they generally should we say pretty pricey and whether it's worth doing or not is, is another matter. Anyway, so the first thing I, I need to do here is take that dial off. Uh, I've actually given it a bit of a clean. It was, it was a little bit uh, dirtied up. There's a, still a couple of marks there with a couple of hot chips have hit it, but that's okay. Um, now, I've actually done that before because I wanted to find out about that, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, but that was just pried off with a, with a screwdriver. The graduations, the dial sits in there and it's just basically a friction so that when that, that moves, the dial moves too. What I've got to do though is take the, the needle off. Um, you could be your other butchers and use a pair of pliers, but there is a, a proper tool that you, you do use to take these things off. So if you're one of these people who, who likes doing this sort of stuff, uh, I'll, I'll show you the tool. Well, that was a little embarrassing. The tool I was making up looks a bit like this. Um, basically, it's a it's a puller. Uh, so I had a uh, the end of a mat pin, which I'd cut off and I drilled a hole in an M4 bolt, and I was just working out what size block I needed to make. And I came in to measure the diameter of the shaft with my calipers, and that was enough to pop the pop the needle off. So. I don't need to make that tool, at least not at the moment. I should probably make one so I've got one. Uh, so there's the, there's the needle. So I'll just put that over there. So the dial comes off and then it's a matter of undoing these screws. And there's the mechanism exposed. Okay. So these three holes here uh, line up with these ones and this one here is just a fourth to hold this housing on. So I'll just pop that off. So there's the, there's the housing along with the fine adjust knob that just pops in there like that. 
and there's the mechanism. So you can just make out the, the rack part there and underneath here is the, uh, is the gears and, and all that sort of thing. So I'm just going to pop this whole assembly off. Right, and that's that's the mechanism which is um, driving the rack. Okay, so if I without that, that moves along there quite nicely. If that was a bit loose, there's a couple of screws here which you can use to adjust. There's a gib strip in there, and you can use that to adjust that. But uh, as it is, that's that looks all right. Uh, I'll probably get a very fine brush or something in there just to make sure there's nothing sitting in there. But the notchiness probably comes from this part. So looking at the edge there, you've got the two gears and then you've got two, these two that run on the rack and, and something's probably bent in there or, or is not quite behaving itself. So I'll have a look under a magnifying glass and see what I can see. I've given this a bit of a clean up uh, and put a bit of graphite on the, on the slides and that, that moves quite nicely. I can't see anything in the, in the rack there. I've also taken this mechanism and run a, a, a sharp point down the gears to, to clean out any muck. Um, nothing too awful, just you know this stuff accumulates over time. I was talking earlier about a hairspring. Now I don't know whether the autofocus will cope with this terribly well, but just in there there is a little hairspring. And so what I think has happened here is that when it was dropped something has skipped a tooth or two and it's out of sync so what I now need to do is put some tension on that hairspring and what I'm hoping is that that will I can then put that back onto the uh, the carriage here and that'll that'll smooth everything out okay because the hairspring gives it a little bit of float so that when those two gears that one and that one are engaged with the rack um, this one can just just you know move a little bit in out of phase if if necessary for for whatever reason. I've got various bits of magnification equipment out here, so you know things like just a state um, magnifying glass. I've also got a, a, a clip-on loop that that goes onto my uh, glasses, but I can't quite see satisfactorily what's going on. So I'm going to have to have to uh, do something else about that. Uh, I was hoping that it was just that the, the two gears weren't properly synchronized, but I'm still getting a, a cyclic sort of error. And if you're ever getting something, uh, a cyclic uh, roughness error, whatever you want to call it, from something, whether that be a lead screw or whether that be a gear, it usually means that there's something on that that is... That is um, uh, causing some some problems. Uh, for a lead screw it could be that lead screw is bent and so it's just tight in one spot. Uh, for a gear it could mean there's a damaged tooth. So I'm going to have to do something here which um, I wasn't planning on doing but uh, you know get out the uh, get out the big guns and see what I can see with this. This bit of kit is an optical profile projector. Um, they're not all that common in home sheds, but they are uh, common in um, places where they do a lot of inspection. This one's actually ex Adelaide Uni. It was a bit of surplus equipment which I, I managed to uh, to get. So what they do, there's there's two modes of, of doing this, but there's there's basically a, a lens here, and you get a light source that comes in and either comes in from the back there and up, or comes in and and, and down but it projects it up on the screen. I've got 20, 50 and 100 times magnification and so that lets me see small parts. I, I actually got it for, for threads and, and gear teeth to try and see some of the finer stuff um, and uh, it's, it's been sitting on this trolley for, for quite some time uh, because I haven't got round to making a proper stand for it and uh, from the use it's getting today I think I'm going to have to do that. I've got my little gear train here um, sitting on a lump of blue tack. Blue tack is actually quite good stuff 
for, for doing this sort of thing because uh, it just holds it in place. So using that I can position this micrometers to, to, to move the stage back and forth. There's a, there's a focus wheel down here to bring it up and down but I can just get that into, into focus and see what that's, uh, that's doing and hopefully uh, work out why I'm getting that, that cyclic sort of um, uh, stiffness. This may be a little difficult to see but it's, it's probably about the best that uh, I can manage here. Um, you can see here there's, there's some gear teeth and they look like they're reasonably well formed. This is the, the gear is actually on an angle so you're getting a, a thicker profile but you can see just down here that those teeth have been crunched and that's that's probably because of the you know dropping the there's there's the there's some good teeth there right but just in one particular spot there and it's not much it's probably or oh, maybe 15 degrees or something like that the gear teeth um, have been been crunched it's only a little brass gear but that means that this assembly is basically um, bin job Fortunately, you can buy spare parts for these, so the next step is going to be find out how much is one of these is, is, is going to cost me. Uh, sometimes the, the Mitutoyo stuff uh, surprises me with how, how cheap it is for what it is, and other times I'm astounded by how expensive it is for what it is. So I'm just going to have to see what that, that looks like. But uh, yes, that's, that seems to be the cause of the, the cyclic um, Rub, uh, not rubbing, cyclic sort of interference. It's, it's just crushed the, crushed the teeth. As you saw from the um, comparator, one of the gears on here was absolutely chewed up, uh, just in a small spot, but that was what was causing the problem. Now, I went and got a price for that whole assembly because I've bought one of those before and it came back at something like three quarters of the replacement cost of this caliper, which was no good to me. Uh, I have a rule of thumb that says spend about half the amount something's a replacement will cost you uh, in, in repairs. And I was a little bit disappointed at that and so I put this away and then I thought maybe I'm asking for the wrong part. So when I, I, I stripped it down and looked at my um, parts list and pulled out the number for just that, that uh, little pinion and ordered one of those. Now one of those was around about um, one eighth of the, the replacement cost so certainly within the, the, the rule I set and so I've got one of these and I'm going to take this out and put that in. When I put this back in I put a little bit of tension on that front um, pinion and so what I'm going to do is I've got a it's actually a staple but it's a, just a th in this case it's just a thin bit of wire and I'm going to put that in there and there's a hole in the the pinion which I need to line up but what I'm going to do is line that up so that it, it basically locks that that pretension in place okay when I first took this part I should have done that in the in the first place but I, I thought I wouldn't need to because I was going to be um, just replacing the whole bit but I'll do that then I'm going to loosen off those two screws slip that in or slip the old one out slip that one in tighten the screws back up put that back in and that should fix it. I had to redo that because the uh, pinion wasn't quite set in the hole but I've, I've got that all set up now and as you can see I've got, I've got smooth motion, uh, it zeroes, I can come out here somewhere, come back and it re-zeroes so it's not skipping any teeth, uh, it's not giving you any, any clicks or anything like that so there we go, successful repair. The only other thing I need to do is there's a little, um, what would you call it, bar, shoe, that 
uh, goes across here so that this can't slide right off the end and I need to make one of those but that's just a piece of flat material with a couple of uh, screw holes in it so we won't bother with that but uh, there you go that's what's inside a dial caliper and uh, if you have a have a problem with um, it you know you dropped it and it feels notchy or something like that then it could well be something like uh, this little gear that um, yeah smaller than my fingernail but uh, that, that caused all the problems. Thanks for watching. See you for the next one.